Good evening, good evening. We welcome you to Stand to Be a Pure Word. I'm Pastor Sonia Chambers, and we're just going to give you a little time to log in. So we just welcome you. We welcome you to the Pure Word. We pray that this word has been a blessing to you. It's almost one year later that we are still officially online. So we just invite you. Just hello, Sandy Simone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. It is still March, right? So we are marching in. Good evening, Mama Sue. Good evening. Good evening to all. Waving at all of you. Good evening, Daisy Cottrell. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Come on in. Good evening, Melody. Welcome, welcome. We're just thankful to the Lord for his goodness. We're thankful for his mercy. We're thankful for his grace. He's king. He's Lord. He's master. We should just begin to worship him. Begin to praise him, begin to lift him up. We're giving him honor, we're giving him glory. We're so thankful there's another, we're in another year. Uh, we started last year in a pandemic and we started out doing online services. So we're almost exactly at the one year mark for doing online services. We started in March, I think our first online was about March the 10th when we did like a DJ um, version and then we just continued from there. So we just thank the Lord, it's eight o'clock. And we just want to start to get, you know, get started. So I just want to give us some announcements related to upcoming. Remember that your clock is springing forward. Remember that your clock is springing forward tonight. So God is expect that God is going to spring forward. Some things are going to move forward in your life as that clock shifts. So do we. Amen. The next thing I want to announce is our pillar scholarship. Um, I do, um, I am the president of Pillar Training and Skills Services, so we just want to clap. I want you to clap at home or clap in the comments. We have three um, award winners that are now, um, I guess, uh, you know, they're going to be awarded the scholarship. So we're, we're thankful for that and we'll be having a Zoom ceremony for that. So thank you to everyone that um, donates to Pillar. And then the third thing I want to talk about is the Kingdom Advancement Alliance outreach related to um, the clothing drive. We're just so thankful for the donations for everyone. Um, good evening, Cora. I see you. Um, because of your donations thus far, we were able to buy footwear for every single child. So now it's just I'm encouraging each and every person and those standard bearers and those on the Kingdom Advancement Alliance team. If you can put in the KAA Global um, Jamaica Outreach, uh, the link, or just type in the KAA Global um, website for those people who um, would like to donate to or adopt a child um, to buy clothing. And we'll be sending out barrels into Jamaica uh, prayerfully by the end of April. That's the goal. Uh, so that's it for now, right? It's still March. Are y'all excited? It is still March. So get excited. We are live. We're excited. We, we're giving God glory. We're giving him honor. We're giving him praise. Um, I'm walking into the birthday month, so I'm getting Psalm 57 ready because I'm going into 5.7. And I'm just thanking the Lord because there's so many that have not seen or, uh, you know, did not make it into 2021. So we just have to be thankful for who we are. And we got to be thankful for um, God just keeping us and preserving us in this season. All right, so the word tonight is intrigued. I-N-T-R-I-G-U-E-D, intrigued. So before we get intrigued in the word, amen, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you and we just praise you for this time. We give you honor, we give you glory, and we give you praise. We thank you, oh God, that we will continue to serve you and magnify and give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for touching each and every person that's listening at the, under the sound of my voice. And I thank you, oh God, that you're touching them in every area of their lives. Um, bring fulfillment to their lives even now in the name of Jesus. Bring purpose to their lives. Not, them, not, not only let them just be intrigued with you, but be in love with you, be in relationship. So, Father, we just give you honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So, the scripture tonight is Acts chapter 17 and we're going to get to verses 16 to 34 good evening um jenny i see you um so 
just put that in the comments for those who are, 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 are um, participating. It's Acts chapter 17, verses 16 to 34, and it's the message version. So the word is intrigued tonight, and intrigued is a verb, and it means to arouse the curiosity or interest of, of by unusual, new, or otherwise fascinating or compelling qualities. So I'm saying to you, what's intriguing you? What's um, arousing you? What's piquing your curiosity? And I was thinking about that, you know, earlier today. What's captivating you? What is the thing that, you know, takes your attention? So think about it. Are you intrigued by Netflix? Are you intrigued by dating apps? Are you intrigued by reading? Are you intrigued by cars? I used to, when I was younger, I used to just watch cars. I used to sit, I used to live in D.C., and I used to sit on a big street called um, 16th Street, and they would have a bench in the middle of the road, and I would just be intrigued by cars. Actually, I was intrigued by Audi cars. I loved to look at Audi cars, and I would just watch them and count them as they went by, and I would just say, well, what is it that captivates us? What is it that's getting our attention? What is it that compels us? Let's, let's go to the word tonight because I want you to be encouraged tonight because this intriguing, this thing that's going to arouse you, this curiosity that you have, that thing that God put inside of you is not related for you to just um, let time go by. The clock is springing forward and the hour is, is being shifted. How? What are you going to do to redeem that time? We just can't be intrigued and captivated by every single thing that's going on. We got to stay focused. We got to stay driven. We got to stay connected to the Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's go to um, verse 16 in um, Acts chapter 17. It says here, it says the longer Paul, and I'm reading the message version for those who are um, reading along. It says the longer Paul waited in Athens for Silas and Timothy, the angrier he got. All those idols. The city was a junkyard of idols. And idols in our lives are not just, just things um, like statues and so forth. But there's idols in our lives like relationships. There's idols in our lives like social media. It's an idol you can't do without it. You got to always check and see what's going on. You got to let people know what's going on with you. That's, you know, sometimes we take it to the, the far, far extent and it becomes an idol. Verse 17 to 18 says, he discussed it with the Jews and other like-minded people at their meeting place. And every day he went out on the streets and talked with everyone who happened along. Do we, are we friendly? Are we saying hi? Even now that we're going through a, a season where people are being vaccinated, there's still a mass, you know, mandates in many places. But are, can they, can they see the smile in your eyes? Can they see a welcoming touch? Can they see it? It says, it says that every day he went out on the streets and talked with anyone who happened along. He got to know some of the Epicurean and Stoic intellectuals pretty well through these conversations. It says, some of them dismissed him with sarcasm. What a moron. Listen to, this is what the word is saying. What a moron. But others listening to him go on about Jesus, the resurrection, were intrigued. They were captivated. So, Here's the thing. One of the things that, you know, not everyone's going to believe what you believe. But there are going to be some people that are going to be intrigued if you tell them. It says that he went around in the streets and talked to anyone that happened along. And I'm saying to you, when's the last time you talked to someone new? When's the last time you said hi to someone that you didn't know? Are you just captivated by just a small circle or the circle that you only know? Or are we going to get... um? to share the gospel, to tell others about Jesus and get their hearts intrigued to want to know him. So it says here, what a moron it says, but others listening to him, because people may call you silly. People are saying, I don't know why you believe that, but I'm saying everyone has a belief. Either they believe there's God and they believe, or, or they don't believe. I choose to believe. And my encouragement is that we should also be choosing to tell others as well. This is not a time to just sit back. So he says, he, it says, but others listening to him go on about Jesus and the resurrection were intrigued. That's a new slant on the gods. So they were, they were open to a new opinion. And how do you know that others are, are not going to be open to, to know about Jesus or hear about him if you don't share them? 
How can they even get any, um, how can we captivate them? How can we appeal to them strongly? How can we get people intrigued if we don't say anything? We just look at people and just look through our mask and we just kind of peek and wave and that's it. And, and because they got intrigued, guess what they said? That's a new slant on the gods. Tell us more. What do you do if you, you, you captivate somebody? You tell them about the love of Christ. You tell them how Jesus died for them. You tell them that as they accept the Holy Spirit in their life, you tell them that, uh, that healing can take place, breakthrough can take place. What are we going to do? We're not going to say anything. So if we don't say anything, you won't hear tell us more. You won't hear tell us more. So we got to intrigue, we got to captivate people, we got to build their curiosity to hear about and know about this God that we serve. Verse 19 to 20, all right, let me start right there. I mean, because I just, I just feel like in this season, we have gone through a whole year of COVID and I'm saying, who do you know? It tell, write in the comments, someone new that you met, write a name, write an initial, do something, but, but evaluate a whole year of in a pandemic if you met anyone new did you tell anyone about the lord did you encourage them did you pray for them and and this isn't to beat you up it's just not for us to reflect because we could get so captivated in our own world in our own self in our own issues in our own circumstances that we forget there's a whole world out there that wants to know about the Lord. There's a whole world that's looking for hope. There's a whole world that's looking for peace. There's a whole world that's looking for love. And it's our job to captivate them. It's our job to tell them. It's not what, you know, we got to step outside of our comfort zone. We can't just sit there and say, um, you know, I don't want anybody to think I'm, you know, a fanatic. But we're fanatic for other things. You go to a football game, you're going to paint yourself, put on your team colors and everything else. And I just got to put on my colors. My colors is just me. But I just love the Lord. And we have to be um, forthcoming in showing that. I'll say that. People need to know that we're Christians. I'm always gonna, that's always going to be in the thread of what I'm saying. People have to know that we are Christians. So, um, you know, I always have a story. So here's the story. So I, um, you know, that we're down here in Florida and I walk most mornings, um, down here, as I always tell you all. So I walk and I walk and I finally, uh, a young lady, you know, reached out to me and just was saying hello as I was saying hello. And we end up talking and in the process of that talking and just having a conversation, it ends up building a relationship that it ends up being now it's a discipleship. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. Even if it's just one person, is it one person that you can support and encourage in the Lord? Is it this? Not everyone is brand new as Christians, but some of them need to reestablish relationship. So we got to captivate them. Are we intrigued? Are we intrigued with the God that we serve? Do we care? Because sometimes you, you, we're with there worrying about others. But well, are we intrigued? Are we captivating people with Christ? And seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added. That's one of our issues. We try to put what we are doing first. Our, our ideas, our businesses, you know, our children, our household. And it says if you seek God and, and do the work, just advance the kingdom. Tell somebody, encourage somebody. You can mentor someone through Zoom. You can do these things safely. You can mentor, mentor someone through video chat. But we want to captivate people. We want to get them intrigued. Even though, and you know, Paul was in Athens and Silas and Timothy and people might have thought they were crazy talking about Jesus. Others were intrigued. Others were looking for hope. And that's who you're looking for. You're looking for the one. You're looking for the fish that needs to be caught. Amen? So verse 19 says, these people got together and asked him to make a public presentation over at Arapagus, where things were a little quieter. They said, this is a new one on us. Can you imagine that you start telling people about Jesus and they be like, I ain't never heard that before. Whoever, do you know there are people who still haven't heard the gospel? I will always continue to remember the neighbor that took me to church because my family did not. So I'm saying it's a new, this, this scripture said, this is a new one on us. We've never heard anything quite like it. 
where did it come up from with this anyway? Because other people have idols in their lives. They have other things that they put before God. And now they're hearing about this gospel. They're hearing about this love. They're hearing about this Jesus who died for them. They're hearing that he was risen from the dead. They're hearing that he was born of a virgin. They, they're just hearing all these things about Jesus. And they say, you know, hmm, tell me more. And that's what I'm encouraging you tonight. Tell others more. Tell them about his love. Tell them about his grace. Tell them about his healing. Tell him that he's a God of breakthrough. Tell him he's a God of more than enough. Tell him he's a God of vision. He's a God of provision. He's a God of purpose. He's a God of love. He's an unfailing love. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. We got to tell them. Because we got to intrigue them. We got to captivate. We got to arouse their curiosity to see why is it that we can go through some of the roughest situations in our life and still be able to stand. Your testimony, sometimes the arousal for others is to know that you are a Christian, knowing what you're going through, and still be able to stand. So sometimes it's not even in the words that you speak, but it's the life that you live. So I'm encouraging you, arouse others with the curiosity to want to know Christ by, guess what, your life. The scripture goes on to say, it says, where did you come up with this anyway? Explain it so we can understand it. People want to know. People want to understand. They want to, um, they, they don't want, a lot of people, they don't want to battle about Jesus. They just want to know about him. So just tell them. Encourage someone in prayer. En encourage someone by sharing. What is intriguing us tonight? What is it going to make us, what is going to captivate us as Christians to want to do it? To share the gospel, to love others, to care about others. You know, I was um, thinking the other day related to online dating. Because that captivates people. Some of y'all might say, ouch. But that captivates people. What makes you, uh, you know, I was thinking about what makes you go online, and male or female, doesn't matter, and... You read a, you, I guess you read, because I've not been on one, but I'm just trying to piece it out from what I'm hearing. You read like maybe a profile. And based on that profile, you get intrigued. You get, you know, captivated. You get aroused. You get an interest in maybe I should press and try to meet that person. Or maybe I should have more conversation with that person. This is the same thing we're saying about Jesus. If we could uh, um, spark people's arousal, maybe we could just press a heart button. Touch an emotion that'll make them want to know more, hear more. But that button is us. There is, you know, there's no online way of, of, of telling others about Jesus. You can read about it, you can so, but what a better way to have a personal touch from one of us. So let's continue. It says, explain it so we can understand. It says, downtown Athens was a great place for gossip. So Father, we pray even now. That those of us that are gossiping, you stop it even now. Because that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to share the gospel, not share gossip. So we say, ouch, right there. It says, there were always people hanging around, natives and tourists alike, waiting for the latest tidbit on almost anything. So basically, this area was a place where people just kind of hung out to see what was going on. What was Ain't that social media in person? <laughs> That you just kind of look around and see what's going to be new, what's going on. And, and we and we love social media because it's an amazing platform for us to share ideas, share the gospel, and so forth. But it also, just like this place downtown Athens, it was a place where people were just waiting to see what was going on. Any little tidbit. Verse 22 says, So Paul took his stand in the open space at Arapagus and laid it out for them. It is plain to see. That you Athenians take your religion seriously. Because he was saying that they, you know, they believe some things, but they want to know more. He said, when I arrived here the other day, I was fascinated with all the shrines I came across. So they were taking their idols and so forth very seriously. But he said, and he said, and then I found one inscribed to the God nobody knows. Oh, let's stay there. The God that nobody knows. There's some people that don't know him. But they know you. So our job is to help them to know him. The scripture says, I'm here to introduce you to this God. So you can worship intelligently. 
Know who you're dealing with. It's one thing to, you know, to have statutes and so forth, but n there's nothing like having a God that knows the innermost parts, your innermost secrets, your in innermost love. But we have to spark others' curiosity. We have to get them intrigued. And the only way we can intrigue them is by sharing the gospel of Christ. Verse 24 says, The God who made the world and everything in it, this master of sky and land doesn't live in custom-made shrines or need the human race to run errands for him. Our God don't need our help in anything. Actually, he's, he, he, he sent Jesus to die so he could reconnect to have relationship with us, but he never needed our help. This is the father of the universe. It says, as if he couldn't take care of himself. Is our God, he can't take care of himself? Can he take care of you? Father, I pray even now in the name of Jesus that those who think that are taking care, they are taking care of themselves, eradicate that mindset even now in the name of Jesus. Share with them. Holy Spirit, touch hearts and minds even now to let others know that Jesus is the way. He's the answer. He's the truth. He's the life. And it's the Holy Spirit that's leading and guiding us and comforting us and protecting us. So our God, he don't need our help. But he would like us to join in alongside him and do the work. Do the work to share the gospel. Do the work to love someone. Do the work to care about others. Do the work to pray for others. Do the work to be compassionate. Do the work and be kind. Show the attributes. Show the fruit of the Spirit. Be long-suffering. Be patient. Be kind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the scripture says, oh, hallelujah. It says, the God who made the world and everything in it, this master of sky and land doesn't live in custom-made shrines or need the human race to run errands for him. As if he couldn't take care of himself. He makes the creatures, the creatures don't make him. He made us in his image and his likeness. Hallelujah. Is there anything too hard for God? I even sense it now that some of you all are going through some situations that you think God can't can't fix but he's here holy spirit tell show them let them feel your presence even in their homes even now jesus is there he's just waiting he is the way of escape we need you like never before father we're not hiding from you we want to spark not only curiosity for others but we want to realize and accept that we really believe what we believe Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But you have shown us enough as those who believe in you, God, that we have to do and move forward with you because there's nothing impossible for you. There's nothing too hard for you. There's no issue too great for you. You're the great physician. You're a healer. You're a way maker. You're the God of the breakthrough. You're Jehovah Jireh. You're Jehovah Nisi. You are more than enough. Adonai, El Shaddai, there's no God higher than our God. There's no shrine that can take his place. Because he died for the human race. And gave us a place. And there's no, it, can you imagine? There's always space. There's always room at the altar. So we give him glory tonight. Give him glory right where you are in your home. Give him honor. Worship him. This merciful, wonderful God that we serve. Glory to his name. Hallelujah to our king. We have to be proud. We have to let them be aroused by being proud of who we serve and why we serve. The scripture goes on. It says, he doesn't play hide and seek with us. Our God is not hiding from us. He's our very present help in time of trouble. Mm. And he's also not only just a present help. In time of trouble, he's the God of the double. So I speak increase even in your life in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough in your finances. Breakthrough in your marriages. Breakthrough in your homes. We thank you, God, that it's not just trouble that you take us out of, but you give us double. And I speak double anointings in your lives even now to step out in the new thing that God has for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to our King. We're talking about being intrigued. We're talking about people getting captivated. 
But we got to show them that our God is stronger. Our God is greater. Hey, there's a song that goes like that, right? He's stronger. He's greater. He's higher than any other. And that's what Paul was saying to them in Athens. You know, you got some gods here. You got some things. You may have your degrees. You may have your cars. You may have your money. But do you have peace? You know what it is? Are you resting at night? So I'm encouraging you tonight. Get intrigued with Jesus. Get aroused with the word. Get captivated in prayer. Let's do so. I dare you to do something different. The scripture says we're the God created. Well, if we are God created, it doesn't make a lot of sense to think we could hire a sculptor to chisel a God out of stone for us, does it? Question. Does it? Do we need to chisel a God out or do we have relationship already? Hallelujah. Verse 30 says, God overlooks it as long as you don't know any better. That's called ouch. Can you imagine it says God overlooks what we're doing and our behaviors if we don't know any better. But that time is past. So some of us who have been uh, uh, Christians for a while, we got to stop double um, being double-minded and double-checking and rechecking what God is doing and so on. We can't do that anymore. That time has passed. It says the unknown is now known. And he's calling for a radical life change. So God is asking us to change, to shift our lives so that others can see and know him. He has set a day when the entire human race will be judged and everything set right. And you know when that judgment comes, you want to have your house in order. Um, I'm going to read one more portion, the last portion of the scripture, and I want to share something with you. Because I want to go back to this because it just reminded me of something that happened uh, a couple of years ago. It says, he has set a day when the entire human race will be judged. And everything set right. He said, and he has already appointed the judge. Confirming him before everyone by raising him from the dead. So who was raised from the dead? Jesus. Verse 32 to 34, and this is the last portion of it. It says, at the phrase, raising him from the dead, the listeners split. Some laughed at him and walked off making jokes. Others said, let's do this again. We want to hear more. That's how it's going to be. Some people are going to laugh at you and others, <laughs> they're going to say, tell me more. Tell me more. But that was it for the day, and Paul left. There were still others, it turned out, who were convinced. Then and there, and stuck with Paul. Among them, Dionysus, the Arapagite, and a woman named Damaris. It don't, it's not going to be a whole bunch of people that's going to stick. But you just want to at least intrigue people, captivate them. Tell them about the Lord. And the latter part of the scripture said, and they were convinced. So I wanted to share this latter part because it, it kind of stuck me when this scripture said in um, verse 30, it said, God overlooks it as long as you don't know better. And there's some of us out there that don't know better. So it's okay if you didn't know Jesus. This is your time and this is your season. You just accept him as your Lord and your Savior. Um, Standard Bureau, y'all put in the, the comments. You can go to the Standard Bureau website because it's interactive for those who don't know him. And there's a link there that says accept Jesus. And you can walk yourself through the steps and, ch and try to learn more about Jesus. And you can accept him right where you are, in your kitchen, in your car, in your bathroom. You can accept him wherever you are because there's no place that he is away from you. But I wanted to, to go to this latter part that says he has a set day when the entire human race will be judged and everything set right. And I was thinking about my late husband. We're going into the third year of his death. And um, he said something to me and I, and I just wanted to share this to you as a word of wisdom. He says, a lot of people are saying, you know, they want to be, there's a thing called a rapture in Christendom and, you know, where Jesus comes and picks up the church. But he sat down and he said to me, he says, you know, you know, Sonia, I'm dying. And he says, do you know that um, 
you you know when you're in a position when you know that your life is ending you start to get your things in order he says but i'm thankful that i was able to walk work with the lord work for the lord while i had time and that's what i'm encouraging you tonight we don't want to be doing deathbed um work where we can only pray for others but we want to run for the lord while we can we want to captivate others by telling them about jesus we don't want to just uh, live on our Christian life and just talk about, you know, I'm saved and I know where I'm going. That's not what Jesus did. He went on the cross and he died for us so that we could have eternal life. And the goal was that we were supposed to make disciples of men. We were supposed to go into all the world and tell them about Jesus. So I'm encouraging you tonight. Let's get to work. Let's start captivating people. Let's start telling them about his love. Let's start telling them about his grace. Let's start telling them about his mercy. Let's start um, finding one other person that you can mentor. One other person that you can care about. One other person that you can disciple. It's not that you have to do everything, but find one person. Even if it's a niece or a nephew that doesn't know him, start there. Because sometimes it's hard to speak to someone that you don't know. But there are people around you. And discipleship is not limited to I can be in your space. We can look, I'm I'm in Florida and y'all are all over the globe. But we can connect. So start to connect with people in a different way. Get them intrigued. That's the word tonight. Get them intrigued. What's intrigued? To arouse their curiosity about Jesus. Let's show them that we have an interest and we care about their salvation. We care about where their eternal life is going to be. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And many people may say, I don't believe that. But there's a lot of things that you do believe that aren't true. They write stuff in history books and you believe it all. And then now we're now trying to fix it. So I'm saying I believe. And I'm encouraging you to believe. I'm encouraging you to be exposed to Christ. And um, when breath leaves your lungs and you uh, finally go before the Lord, you want to hear well done. Come on in. You want to hear that. So I encourage you tonight to start to get you as a Christian, those of us who are on here as Christians, let's get captivated in Christ so we can get others intrigued. So God bless you all. Once again, I'm Pastor Sonia Chambers. I'm the senior pastor of Standard Bear, New York, of Standard Bear, Florida. I'm the apostolic leader of Kingdom Advancement Alliance and I approve this message. Do y'all approve? We approve Jesus. So we just want to give him a hand clap. We just give him honor and glory and praise because we approve what the Holy Spirit is doing. That as we share the gospel and tell others about his love, that God, mm, he's getting ready to shift some things in your life. And you think that you spring, some people is springing forward. Not that you lose in an hour. Shift the thought tonight. I'm springing forward. I am not losing an hour. So we, God bless you all. I just love you all so much. And just keep praying because this week is the birthday week. But well, you know, it's the whole month. But we approve what God is doing in our lives. And I just bless y'all. I bless your families. I bless your children, your grandchildren. I speak blessings upon blessings over your life. And we thank you for your sacrifices that y'all uh Give by just joining in with us on Pure Word. So God bless you all and good night.